There he goes again. Yeah, baby! My little buddy here is exceedingly excited because he just switched to Central Pacific Bank. It's epic! Without CPB, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. All the places we can go. What's really funny is that I started testifying at a county council meeting because they wanted to build a Kia car lot here uh -huh. uh, oh. in Kilkaha. Uh, instead of these local restaurants right here, there's like six of them. They wanted to take out those local companies and put a Kia car lot. Uh -huh. So I actually started out by going and I was testifying against this Kia yeah, car yeah. lot. Because I'm like, no, we don't need a car lot. We need our local businesses. And mm -hmm. I was getting very fired up about it. You know? <laughs> so then I went and then people videoed me, but I didn't know. Yeah, and then yeah. they were saying Brie for mayor and I still didn't know. And then I didn't log on to my Instagram. So I hadn't <laughs> known that this was going around Brie for mayor. So people were messaging me, Brie's going to run for mayor. And I was joking like, yeah, 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 one day. But then it became a thing. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then people yeah. were making their own flyers, a brief for mayor flyer. <laughs> and then people were putting their own backgrounds like, oh, here, shout out to Duchess. That was creative. <laughs> and then I was just like, wow, people are really, honestly, marketing. <laughs> They're doing great. Hey guys, welcome back to Uncut, the podcast where we talk to Hawaii's top entrepreneurs, creatives, and change makers. I'm Andrew. And I'm Kobe. And today we have a very special guest, my dear friend, Briani Kobayashi. Bri is an entrepreneur, community leader, and mama from Hilo, co-owner of Keokaha General Store, general manager of SCP Hotel, and president of Hawaii Rise Foundation. Bri was named as one of Hawaii's most admired leaders in 2023 and selected by Pacific Business News as the 2022 Pineapple Honoree. And I've heard you've been called the Princess of Hilo. Oh. <laughs> thank, thank you for joining us, Princess of Hilo. So thank you for having me. <laughs> Happy to be here. So you grew up in Hilo. Mm -hmm. Did you grow up in Kilkaha? So born and raised in Hilo, actually in Kalmana area. Okay. But um, yeah, a lot of the people who helped to take care of me were from Kilkaha. Mm -hmm. So my mom was a single mom, you know, raising three of us. And we were all under three years old so three two and one wow <laughs> go mom <laughs> yeah so three kids in diapers shout out to mom wow shout out to my mom yeah three under three that should be a new thing there's two under three two. under <laughs> three under three and um so she was just really busy trying to go back to school and make a career for herself and just do all these things so yeah for paddling or for whatever types of activities we had i had so many hanai aunties and uncles mm -hmm. that kind of just yeah. helped to kokua and take care of me and so many of them came from Keokaha. so mm -hmm. we like make a joke like i'm briani kobayashi nicholas mm -hmm. agpoon <laughs> the yeah. long list of names yeah. <laughs> from all the Keokaha families that have Hanai'den. adopted yeah. and <laughs> taken care the ahuna has <laughs> taken care of me of all the year through all of the years yeah oh so sweet yeah. well i know brie from our our kids are in class to our in the same class together at HPA for a couple years. And then we lost her. <laughs> and then I came but back to Hilo. Came back to Hilo. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of done that a couple of times in my life. Like, born and raised in Hilo. And then in middle school, my mom had said, hey, you know, I want you guys to apply to go to HPA. And she was actually um, getting her master's and she was going to teach, like, summer over there. Wow. So... We got into HPA, and my youngest brother got into uh, Kanuoka Aina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we moved to Waimea, and I was in seventh grade. So we moved out to Waimea, and then graduated high school, and then I went away to uh, University of Denver, mm -hmm. and then came home, moved back to Hilo, mm -hmm. <laughs> went to UH for a bit, <laughs> moved back to Waimea, worked at Merriman's for a bit, and then went to, came back to Kilkaha. And probably got hanaied into some Waimea families too. Got hanaied <laughs> by all the beautiful people, yep. And then opened the store in Keokaha and then got that running and then moved back to Waimea, mm -hmm. which is where I <laughs> connected with Lots you. Of moving. Lots of back and forth. <laughs> and then last year I moved back to Hilo. <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of in between. But mm -hmm. I feel like when you're in Waimea, you know also like Prince of Waimea. Like you know everybody in Waimea too. Oh. It's just like Everybody knows you and loves you. And like, we know Brie. Everybody knows Brie. I love, I love Waimea too, you know. Like both places just have so many beautiful people and so much rich culture mm -hmm. that it's really special. Like Keoka has the second largest um, Hawaiian homestead, mm -hmm. believe in the state. So, you mm -hmm. know, we love our homesteaders and mm -hmm. we have our store, you know, mm -hmm. Keoka General Store in uh, Keokaha and so our store has been more of like a hale mm -hmm. more of like a home for people yeah so I feel like that just 
is one of the reasons why people might just like know us because we're like, oh, look, you know, we know your babies. We watched yeah. you grow up. We see yeah. all the things happening. Yeah. Just like such a small community. Yeah. So and then in Waimea, you have the same thing. We have Waimea General Store. You mm-hmm. have the auntie over there who runs her <laughs> store. Mm-hmm. The people who have their coffee, like every community has their people, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And they're all just so awesome. So for those of you don't, who don't know, Keokaha General is like, as you're going into Keokaha to like the beaches and stuff, it's like the first store. So you stop there, get your musubis and like your snacks and stuff and then like move on. But it's like really like you need to stop there when you're going to Keokaha. The, the entry point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our entry point. Yeah, there's yeah. a big mural that says Aloha on the front doors. And then there's this sign that says, through these doors walk the greatest people in the whole <laughs> wide yeah. world. I love that. And we, we believe that. Yeah. yeah. We believe nice. That. And you started that with your mom? My mom and I opened what, that. What was the vision for that? At the time, um, her friends had come to her and said, hey, you know, we really want to open a store. In, you know, we want you to open the store in Keokaha. And we went. At the time, it was called uh, Keokaha Market. And we went to the store and... My mom just said, oh, you know, if we have to take this, take over this store, we're going to have to like clean it and redo everything. And it's going to be like a full time job and buy me good coffee. (laughs) I was like, I didn't really have a choice. And her vision was to create a safe, uh, friendly store for the community and to teach her kids, myself and my two brothers. I'm the oldest, a little bit about business. Mm. And so it was the best teacher of my life it's just such a small little store Mm -hmm. but just teaches you so much about community and Mm -hmm. about business and how really they're so connected Mm -hmm. community and business that's awesome you got the experience at such a good age from your mom through like through personal experience what were some like memorable takeaways like with your time there oh man what year was that that you guys well, you know, what had happened was I, I had found myself in this, like, not really a great relationship. Uh-huh. And I had found... That's life. Yeah, there was life. <laughs> and this really great guy, um, he was trying to help me through the process. And he, I saw him like an uncle figure, you know. And he said, hey, you know, you got to gotta help me out here. You know, we're trying to get you, you know, some help. And I said, oh, well, I don't really want to talk to you. I don't, really, I don't even know you. You know, I'm like, I was probably 17 or so. And he said, well, where I'm, where I'm from, we don't just give up on people, you know? And I thought, okay, I don't, who, is this, who is this guy, you know, telling me these positive things? Um, and then later I found out that he was from Kilkaha. Oh. So when I came back from college and I saw the store, I thought, yeah, this is such a beautiful community. And, you know, that uncle that helped me, this is his home. So mm-hmm. I was determined to, to give the store and the community a safe place. Like, that guy helped me out. Um, And so one of my biggest takeaways from that experience was how just a store could really just be so much more. We were a drop-off location for so many different things happening for disaster relief efforts here and there in the community, uh, just helping distribute anything really for Kupuna, Mm -hmm. for Keiki during COVID. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the biggest experiences, I think, for me, just from the store, realizing that even if we're just a small general store, we're a part of the community, just like this hotel. And we have a, you know, an obligation to do what we can in that in that space to make the most difference. So I feel like I just try to take that with me and through the store too. like, hey, we're bigger than just a store. We're a place that people come and we can help you guys. And so if we can do that with every experience, then it's a good it's a good takeaway for me. I love that story of the uncle. You at that time didn't realize like what he was trying to tell you but like mm-hmm. later on it kind of like made sense was there any other stories like that that you had experienced through just meeting people from Kilkaha that you know taught you things about life oh. um, a couple of years into opening the store um, I had caught a kid stealing from my store you know and he was just chilling down the aisles but something about him was just a little sketchy <laughs> and I'm like Sus. I'm like hey guy <laughs> I see you I'm like Come on, man! Not the skittles <laughs> and the lures. He <laughs> got the good stuff. He got the good stuff. At least. That's such a Kale Kaha <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm like this boy, so I just say, "Hey, you know, why are you why are you stealing from me?" He was kind of just shocked, like, but immediately he was like, "Are you gonna call the cops?" Like, just defeated, mm-hmm. like, just take me. <laughs> and I'm like, "No, actually, you know, I, I want to know, like, why are you stealing?" And he's like. I don't know, because I'm bored. I said, well, you should get a job. <laughs> He's like, well, uh, what I got to do for do that? You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like well, you need to you need a, um, write a resume. And he's like, what's that? 
And I'm like, you know what? Ask your mom. You know, ask your mom what a resume is. He's like, how old was this kid? He was probably like 14 or 15, okay, okay. but old enough to get a job, you yeah. know? Yeah. And he said, um, my mom does not know what a resume is. And I said, oh man, okay, so. We Googled it together, you know, and then by this time, I'm like invested in this kid. I'm like, okay, well, it's like this piece of paper. It's a template that tells you that and all the background. He's like, what if I don't have any job? And I'm like, that's a great question, you know? Well, we're going to pull from other experiences. Like, have you done mm-hmm. the yard at your grandpa's house? And I'm like, put landscaping. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm like, you've done lots of things. I'm like, have you helped your grandma? He's like, yeah, I'm like, put Kapuna care. He's oh, lots of experience. Kapuna <laughs> care. Just allowing them to see that they're experiences and their background actually is valuable Mm -hmm. and so we made this resume and uh, it was simple it was half a page or something and then uh, I said okay you know what go out turn this in I printed him like 10 copies or something I said take this to the stores and he said where I said wherever you think can see yourself working so he dropped it off and then the following week he came back to the store and I said, hey, you know, how's it going? And he's like, I got a job. Uh, and I was like, that's awesome. Aww. You know, and he was asking me questions and he goes, well, I came because I was wondering if you could help my friend get a job too. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and there was a girl like sta- standing with her, him and I'm like, does she steal from me too? <laughs> he's like, oh, sometimes. Not anymore, not anymore. <laughs> sometimes. He's you like, gotta appreciate the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> these these on- kids are honest, you know? And so I said, okay. So anyway, through starting these things, I, I realized, oh, you know, I hadn't even learned how to do this. These are th- tough things that kids don't know how to do. Mm-hmm. So we kind of made like this list of, I became friends with this kid, you know? I'm like, okay, go tell all your friends this deal to come over here. <laughs> this is the spot now. Come this come get your resume done. Your services yeah. now. No, seriously. And they were like, well, we didn't learn how to write a check or open a bank account or do interviews or CP. I'm like, okay, okay, let's start. So we started this like series of workshops. And at the time we just did like once a month and we didn't have any money, we didn't have anything. So we just asked people, if you know how to teach a work these things, let me know. Yeah. And if you can host a workshop, let me know. And it was so awesome because people like my friend uh, Racine, she's a former Miss Hawaii. She said, I can teach the how to do an interview. I was like, that's mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. awesome, you know. Um, former Senator Kaika Hele, he said, I can teach the how to vote portion of it. So people were stepping up to to teach the workshops. And like Kiana Laahana, the school in Keokaha, they said, you can use our space at the week- on the weekends. Wow. We have computers. So people were stepping up and that's real community, yeah. grassroots efforts, like other people saying, I can help, I can help you. And so we uh, started doing these workshops and after a year, we had some like data to build from it and we we decided yeah we're going to open a nonprofit and and want to do these classes more because you know we have man i want to say when covid happened some of our workshops had over 500 people no way wow that's amazing wow. it was like and they were all free yeah and i am not teaching the workshops people that know more than me were teaching <laughs> the workshops so but you you're know, the master organizer yeah, like you brought it all together everybody together yeah. so so we opened the nonprofit and we started teaching workshops, and then we just went off with it. Any type of workshop, how to parallel park. Oh my God! How to I change wow. take that class. I, I can s- <laughs> <laughs> yep. How to change a tire. Wow. Oh, valuable life lessons. Valuable that's awesome. life lessons. That's like you know, you, how to do your taxes. Mm-hmm. Oh, how good to, one. Oh, let me get into that one. Yeah. yeah, and and people continue to step up. Like other CPAs were like, I can teach that too. I can mm-hmm. add to this. How to buy first time homeowners. Like wow. Random workshops, and so we took off, and now it's seven years later and wow. we still have our nonprofit. We're still doing workshops and they're still free, thankfully. Yeah. Um, but that was something that came out of the store that was really special. That's so That's amazing. cool. I don't know, honestly, anybody else, if, even myself, like if I had, had a kid like stealing from me, I don't think I would have reacted that way. I was thinking <laughs> about, about it too. Like, I'm calling cops on you. <laughs> no, yeah. Like in that moment, you know, I'm like, dang, like, what would be the biggest impact for this kid, you know? If I call the cops on this kid, he's mm-hmm. going to go stand in front of the judge. He's going to claim his thing. And then he's going to go right back into this this system, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's not going to help him a- at all. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, even now, we're years and years later. But I'll still see him. I'll Aww. still see him around. And He would never forget that. And there's, this, sure. there's this grace about him that he yeah. has this, like, thank you. It's a yeah. subtle thing. Yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. I know that he appreciates that chance. I'm yeah, sure. no, I mean, it's yeah. like at that split moment, it was like two decisions, right? Like you could have called the cops 
but chose to help him and look at all the things that came from it for him and for you and everyone else. And my that's Skittle going to inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't get the he Skittles, be making something. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what he's doing today. If you're watching this, comment and be he's, like, hey. He's fishing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fishing. With those lures that he yeah, bought. Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are the ones. What's a nonprofit called and how can people like help? Um, our nonprofit is called Hawaii Rise Foundation. And how to help. How to help. Just reach out to us if you if you know how to teach any cool workshops. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you. Um, yeah, and just just being a part of the community community in any way, really. You see, we're so much better together, mm -hmm. leveraging our resources and partnerships than trying to do it all alone. Mm -hmm. For us, we're like, if other people know how to do things and know how to do it better, please come. Let us know. Mm -hmm. Share mm -hmm. your knowledge and resources with us because we, we can, you know, use it. You guys have been giving out scholarships to kids mm -hmm. i mean i i watch you with your big checks like every year so tell me about like the reason behind that and like why you decided to go like the scholarship route mm. yeah for myself i just remember seeing so many opportunities and just reaching out to my mom and saying hey i want to do this or that and she would be like well it's gonna cost it costs a lot of money you know and even just for sports for kids mm -hmm. registration fees or annual fees it's expensive and for sports gear itself and so it first started out as an initiative to help kids going through sports, like a sports scholarship. Oh, okay. So like nice. you need, you know, tennis shoes or a tennis racket or any anything really. Then apply for it. And there may be 50, 50 to $100 of, of these stipends. And as they started getting, you know, we started receiving them, we started seeing like, wow, these these kids really just are trying so hard on their own, you know? <laughs> like Yeah, that's... That's you can really tell cute. that there's some that for sure your their parents are like, you better apply for this <laughs> scholarship. <laughs> but there's some that are hustling for that money. Yeah. And so we started seeing uh, that happen. And um, we were dishing out the, the scholarships as they came in. And then other people started saying, hey, you know what? We want to be a part of it. Can we create our own scholarship? Again, people stepping up to the plate and wanting to be a part of this of this momentum and this movement going on. So we started off with a $1,000 scholarship um, called the Holomua Scholarship. And Holomua is to move forward. Um, so just encouraging students to just to move forward. Um, and that was inspired by my mom. Mm -hmm. So it's for, for, my, for our store, for my mom and I. And then, you know, Kea, Kea mm -hmm. she, she's, she has a, um, had a sister who had passed away at 18 years of age. And she wasn't supposed to live till she was like older than one years mm -hmm. old. But she lived till she was 18 years old. So Kea's family said, can we make one in honor of Rachel, um, just honoring, and maybe this can go towards somebody with a nurse or health degree or mm -hmm. type style. So then we thought, oh, this is a great idea. We can offer scholarships to people, and they can create their own scholarship yeah. and then create their own criteria for what their scholarship would be. So then someone else said, hey, I'll create mine in honor of my auntie who passed away, da, da, da. And so now we're at, I think, giving over $20,000 of scholarships That's annually. That's huge. And yeah. That's awesome. Another, another part of you, like, fostering and building this community of, like, people helping others. That's awesome. That's and amazing. honoring people and that honoring people, in the yeah. process, you know. Like, I feel like a lot of times it's like there's a way that we can... Just show respect for the people who, who came mm -hmm. before us in a way that honors their their initiatives. So this year we're adding a, um, another scholarship, and um, this is also in honor of someone who had passed away, who's my uncle actually. So his wife is creating a scholarship in honor of him. He passed away from cancer about a, a year ago. And so just another way, you know, that maybe a youth can be inspired by what he did and impacted through education. In a education. way, you're like continuing their legacy too. Yeah, yeah. trying. That's so yeah. cool. That's amazing. When I, um, I was reading, like, this article that came out on Big Island News Now, and I was like, I feel like I, like, I mean, you're my friend, but then I was reading through these things, and I'm like, holy smokes, like, you've done so much in, like, your, like, in your short life. You've, like, accomplished so much already. Like, what do you think will be, like, the next thing that you're, like... <laughs> well, the next thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm on the ballot, too, running for mayor. <laughs> Can you tell me about yeah, how that came tell us about up? that. And this like, is so cool because I'm, like... I mean, it makes so much sense because of, like, who you are in the community. But then I'm, like, you don't really see, like, people, like, our age-ish. I mean, I'm older than you. But, like, you know, like, plenty of people complaining about stuff. Plenty of people complaining and maybe not even voting, but then to go out there and put yourself out there like that, it's like, where'd that yeah. come from? <laughs> I had always 
loved politics, I think, like from a young age. Mm -hmm. In high school, I really loved um, understanding more about how to just make Hawaii a better place. I had went to stay in Washington, D.C. Um, so going back in time, this is a long time ago. Yeah, you went everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went everywhere. I went everywhere. So there was this scholarship that came out, and pretty much it was a scholarship for college, but then it came with this, like, you get to meet the president, you know, and the Supreme Court and all these wow. different really awesome people. <laughs> and so I was super excited and I applied and I didn't think I was going to, I didn't think I was going to get it, but I was applying for it for the financial assistance. You know, mm -hmm. I really needed this um, scholarship money. So the first part of it was like this multiple choice uh, essay, uh, multiple choice thing. So I took the multiple choice and then I passed. So I was, I was so excited. I got, to, I had to take an essay. I had to write an essay about um, Hawaii, Hawaii and like different histories about different things that have happened and bills that have been passed. And then I passed that, which I really didn't think I was going to get. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to get it. And then I got a call from uh, Senator Akaka and he said, hey, you know, is this Briani? I'm Senator Akaka and you got, qual you qualified for this scholarship, so you're gonna have to come to the Capitol and inter we in an interview here, you here in Honolulu. I said, oh gosh, I'm from Hilo, I'm in Hilo. He's like, yeah, we're gonna fly you up. I'm like, okay, I'm so, I'm so excited. I never thought I'd <laughs> just to go to Honolulu. I'll just go to Honolulu. Round three now. Oh, I was so excited. So then he flew, flew us up to um, Honolulu and then the interview was at the Capitol and it was just me and I was the only girl mm -hmm. and there was nine other guys and most of them were from Punahou or Iolani mm -hmm. and, but there was myself and there was one other uh, local boy and his name was Daniel Kubo. Shout out to Daniel Kubo. He became a doctor. He went to Harvard. He's nice. awesome. He oh, looked yeah, Daniel. <laughs> we, uh, shout out to Daniel Kubo. He was awesome. Okay, because... So so we get to the interview and I'm like oh yeah I'm done here. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like this is. <laughs> but somehow I got it. Hey, you thought about that the whole time. But look at where you are. Somehow I got it. So I got to go to Washington D.C. Was and it I, with Daniel Kubo? And I got to go with Daniel Kubo. Oh, oh that's nice. Big kids. Just so happened it was wow. two Big Island kids that got selected. And we were so shocked. And I just remember both of us showing up, like, both of us from Hilo. And he's a white cow boy, you know. And I was just like, this is awesome. Aww. And so we get on the plane and we go to Washington, D.C. We get to do all these fun things. And we are both really inspired by, by just what was happening in leadership and just the different things. And we got to represent Hawaii on that level. And no, I actually got really sick up there because I actually got like hypothermia because I didn't know how cold it was going to be. You got uh, hypothermia? Was, <laughs> that's pretty much what I got. Uh, they have to send too cold. You got like shocked. This is literally anybody that was at that program knows. Shout out to them too because they were really awesome to me. They were like, do you want to borrow my coat? Do you need help? Because it was so cold and I just didn't realize how cold it would be in Washington, D.C. in March. No, like hypothermia is actually like no joke, right? It it's not like you can't even, it was it's so not cold. even like you have to get warm, like you become sick, right? Yeah, and no, like, and my mom sent me with things and everything, but I didn't know how to layer properly. So, <laughs> Kilo girl, yeah. I was really thinking I'm gonna be fine. I'm, right? good. I'm I fine. I'm in DC. Scarf. Yeah. I'm in Virginia. I'm totally cool. I was not totally cool. I was frozen. I was dying. <laughs> and, and then they sent a doctor to my hotel room. Oh, that yes. bad, yeah. Okay. And they were like, we're gonna get you back to. You know, and Daniel, like, it's, he's like, hey, look, we're meeting the president. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to get it. it get it together. Get it together. <laughs> no, dead serious. He's like, I brought Big Island candies to give Senator Akaka. Don't worry. Just get better. Just stop this already. <laughs> hey, look, now he's a doctor. No, now he's Good a doctor. Good advice. Good <laughs> advice, yeah. <laughs> the first patient he had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was dying. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> and then we, we met the president. And it was super cool. We got to just do like two weeks in D.C. and learn so much. So I came home inspired. And then I was actually a poli sci major in college. And then at some point, I kind of just got defeated because I'm like, man, these are these are like really crazy issues. And what's getting done about it? Mm. So I started doing, you know, my own business. And then I got my master's in business. And now I'm just like seeing all these changes and recognizing where it, where what my past and where it's led me to that maybe this might be a good experience for me and maybe a good opportunity to share my bold and innovative ideas on a county level. Yeah. No, I love it. I love it because we also have like Billy Kinoy. Like he was a great, everybody loved him. Yeah. But he wasn't like, he didn't say all the right things and he didn't, you know, yeah. some, but he like had he the was biggest. Real. Yeah, mm -hmm. real. The and biggest aloha. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I wonder, like for me, you know, I mean, I have my master's in business and for some people I think they'll say, oh, she doesn't have county council experience or whatnot, but I have a lot of experience in business and in mm-hmm. community management and here in hospitality and understanding how to use hospitality for like regenerative tourism. Mm-hmm. So just a little bit of everything. I feel like I kind of do have a good, um, you know, collection of experiences that could help us pivot forward. So I'm excited about it. I'm learning a lot already. Just learning a lot about this experience. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, what are some things you've learned on this, like, this new journey so Trust far? Trust no one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not, not joking. <laughs> yeah. JK, not JK. Trust yeah. no one. No, you know, I'm learning that no matter what, like, for me to go into communities and understand their needs is an investment of my time. So it's never going to be like I regret this. You know, I don't want to say win or lose, but win or learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we're I love just, that. There's no winning or losing, yep. it's winning or learning. We're no, yep. Yep, there's no losing. We just win or we learn. And even then, you know, we just, we learn so much about the communities we're going into and really understanding what they need that it's never going to be like a waste. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to go into places and to try and get to introduce myself to, to secure a vote. It's like deeper than that for me. I'm trying to go inside of communities and understand the communities and be able to say like, how can we help you guys? What do you guys need? The people in the communities know what they need. Mm -hmm. They can tell you, you know, down the street, the second block, there's this one area that needs fixing. You just got to ask them. Mm -hmm. So part of why I'm excited to run is really understanding the needs of the community comes from asking them questions and then hearing them mm-hmm. and then responding, not going into a place and saying, I'm going to do this, this, this. And mm-hmm. then they're like, why did we do that? We could we just needed this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited about really figuring out what the needs are from the community itself. Yeah. And I feel like you're already like doing that at a different level. So it's like now it's like at a different level, you're still getting to know them. And now it's like, what can you do in your power to like, you know, keep yeah. it going and make things make things happen and I'm always like like I like to look at budgets Mm -hmm. operational budgets and capital budgets and figure out like okay there's this really big issue here like homelessness what can we do with certain funds how can we properly Mm -hmm. allocate funds and resources so that it's just makes sense that's a business background right there so that excites me yeah Yeah. how do you solve that problem Mm -hmm. I'm like problem solving I'm like this is exciting oh and then we can travel upstream and figure out other issues that are affecting this one issue like mental Mm -hmm. health or whatever it is Mm -hmm. so it's it's really exciting it's really exciting for me but yeah and Kobe mentioned I have two littles you know my son's gonna be 10 and my daughter's gonna be or my daughter is four she's gonna be five but seeing the issues that we have in our younger generations too, like it's real. Yeah. And understanding them as a mom and understand as a parent in general, just understanding like what we can do to help our keiki and our younger generations move forward. Because if this is what we're doing, it's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. And it's, we don't want them to just survive. We want them to like thrive. Yeah. We don't want them to just be making it, which is what's what's happening you know which just we're just making it yeah so a lot of my inspiration yeah comes from wanting a better future for my kids and my kids kids and just futures to come I don't even know necessarily like for me this going for mayor experience it really isn't even about me I don't know how it will jet I don't know how it'll actually really benefit my life personally Mm -hmm. I'm like fully putting myself out there to be picked at try my best and maybe still get picked at but like I really feel like we need the help Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to help. <laughs> that's a very oh, that's courageous amazing. move, actually. Like, what's the thing that like you're worried about or intimidates you? Because yeah, that's why a lot of people don't because it's like you're really putting yourself out there and your family, you know, like. Oh yeah, yeah. I think for a long period of time, I just kept thinking there's gonna be time. One day the time will come. My time will come. But if anything, like COVID has taught me these last couple of years, like whether or not you believe COVID was man-made or not, or whatever your your experience is, like it happened and life has never been the same. So mm-hmm. these last four years, everything has changed and it taught me that nothing is promised. Mm-hmm. Time is not on our side. Like it's a thief. Mm-hmm. And so I just feel like I got to do it now. Mm-hmm. Now is the time, you know, to go for it and do my best. But one thing I'm afraid of is not having enough time. That's mm-hmm. something that's always kind of like something I'm paranoid of Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. never have enough time so I'm just always trying to do something and it's not a healthy thing either (laughs) there's better coping mechanisms (laughs) than filling your day with 400 things to keep busy empty block in my calendar let's fill it no horrible empty I can squeeze like three meetings into that yeah so not having enough time scares me you know I'm like I don't have enough time we need to do all of these things so trying to just um 
take one thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's been hard. <laughs> no, but like what you're saying about like being a mama, I, even for myself, I look around and like I'm seeing like the house housing prices going up and up. And I'm like, my kids are not going to be able to afford to live in the place that they call home. Like I can't even like they're going to have to ha- be a, like gazillionaire. To, yeah, like, you shouldn't have to be a millionaire to live in your home. Yeah. And, you know, you shouldn't have to struggle to sleep in your home every night while tourists are able to sleep here for weeks at a time without any problem. It's not fair. You Mm -hmm. know, it really isn't. So I'm really um, passionate about that, passionate about that too. And even with, you know, like with my kids, you know, when you're doing really well in one area, then something, something got to give. So you're doing something professionally. We're here doing something working. You know, we aren't at our kids' recitals or wherever it is people you know people are doing with their kids sports events or whatnot so you have to figure out what's worth your time Mm -hmm. and energy because we only have a certain amount of time and energy Mm -hmm. and so for me like really foreseeing how me sacrificing my time and energy now might give my kids some time and energy later Mm -hmm. i try Mm -hmm. to think about that too that's a good perspective yeah i think one thing i'm realizing i'm a new parent as well six months oh congratulations And, and like she said you know your perspectives about everything shift. And I think the more we we think about it, like uh, the politics and, you know, everything happening, it's not now, you know, it's like, ye- it takes years and it takes a long time. It's so it's like what you're planting. doing. Yeah, yeah. So it's like what you you're might, doing now to like better yeah. their lives so they can thrive and not right. just survive. Right, like true legacy. Yeah, planting seeds yeah. that under, tr- you know, the trees you might never sit under exactly. or bear the fruit from, mm-hmm. but the fruit's coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fruit's coming. You just got to plant the seed. You know, you might not eat the fruit. Mm-hmm. Your kids might not even eat the fruit. Well, somebody told me too, like, whether or not you know that you're planting seeds, you're either planting good seeds or bad yeah. seeds. And like, even if you'd, you're not conscious and you're planting bad seeds, like, you're going to reap yeah. that too. Yep. So just be... Being mindful of like, what am I doing today? That's like going to affect the future. 10 years from now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. 20 or 50. Yeah. It's kind of a scary thing to think about, actually. It is so scary. It's like, yeah. man. Because just like in our lifetime, mm-hmm. the way that we've seen our island change or our Hawaii change, it's like, man, like such a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's here wild. in this right space where we're sitting at, you know, we were... 1957, a tsunami came and took all of this out, you know, the Nehai, and then 1960, you know, another four feet above us, all of this. And now here we are in 2024. Mm-hmm. It's just like wild. You just never know what's going to what's going to happen, what life is going to throw at you, you know. And so, yeah, just living for the living in the now, but it's for the future, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's trying to be proactive, not reactive. Yeah. I'm trying not to be, you know, trying Love to be that. ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this week, um, we're recording the start of Merry Monarch Week, mm-hmm. big <laughs> which week, is a big huge week, week yeah. in Hilo and for our state, really, because I feel like everybody comes here. You were saying that Merry Monarch Week is like probably yeah. the busiest week. Yeah, normally I'm the um, VIP usher at Merry Monarch. So normally I work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. But this year I'm not going to be ushering. I'm going to be working here at our event. So We'll be, we'll still be busy, but looking forward to not really rushing everywhere and kind of just soaking it all in, trying to enjoy it. Explain to us like the buzz that is Merry Monarch Weekend Hilo, because it, it's Monday, so like not a lot of things are like happening just yet. But yeah. Definitely, you definitely feel like the energy, like yeah. things. So like Mondays, <laughs> like when the news channels <laughs> arrive and they kind of like try to understand where their places are and where they're going to be doing their filming. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, like, uh, Tuesday is when the halals start coming in, mm-hmm. so the dancers. And so it's that's really fun when you can start hearing, like, the different uh, ipu. You know, you can just hear the music in the background, then you know that the, the halal has arrived. <laughs> and, and they're <laughs> everywhere, too, right? And they're like everywhere. At, at, like, armories, and, mm-hmm. like, they're staying. And they have to not, eat, so yeah. they're, they're around everywhere. in the yeah, community. Yeah. And, <laughs> chanting everywhere you can just hear it you're like okay they're around the hula gods have arrived (laughs) and then you have your musicians and whatnot Mm -hmm. and a lot of them they play with a with different halal so they're also roaming around and Mm -hmm. enjoying and then wednesday kicks off hoike night Mm -hmm. so then people are kind of in and out and then it's just like this abundance of rich culture and hawaiian music and laughter and everyone's just really proud Mm-hmm. really proud and yeah Mary Monarch was just named the number one cultural 
festival in the United States. Mm-hmm. So even more so of a buzz. Yeah. Yeah. But I really love Mary Monarch because it's the one time you can just like support the local vendors. Yeah. They work so hard all year mm-hmm. to create inventory to be able for to Mary share Monarch. for Mary yeah. Monarch for, yeah. for three days. They, yeah. you know, they, and so do the Halals. The mm-hmm. day after Mary Monarch, they're practicing. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. So it just for these three, four <laughs> days, it's like this huge emphasis on making sure it's the best week mm-hmm. for, but for 350 days mm-hmm. to yeah. put this on. Yeah. So we get a chance to support those people. And I think that's super fun. It's really, I mean, have you ever been to Hilo during Mary Monarch? No, oh I, I, my gosh. I, no I, when I told people I was flying in to Hilo, they're like, oh, you're staying for the week? I was like, no, I fly out <laughs> Monday night. <laughs> so now I think I'm going to have to stay. Oh, you should. You I should. wonder if I, there's a hotel. I, I know. I wonder if there's a manager. <laughs> <laughs> I might know a manager. <laughs> no, shout out. Thank you for letting us record at SCP. Yeah, it's, it's so beautiful. so beautiful. It's my first time being here. I mean, I've been meaning to come here forever. Ever. Oh, but. yeah. I love this place. Hello. Tell us a little bit about this property and like the history of it. Yeah, so this uh, property used to be called the Hukilau Hotel back in 19, the 1950s. So my grandpa built this hotel back in the 1950s. And the goal was really just to give local people a home away from home to be affordable for n- local and neighbor island travelers. Mm-hmm. And so we were the only Hawaiian-owned hotel in the world. Wow. Actually, yeah. Oh, wow. And he, he was really a great businessman and visionary um, so he had built the Hilo Seaside and then Maui and Kona. Um, but yeah, Hilo Seaside is where what this was prior. And then COVID hit and it was just such a rough time for everyone. Mm-hmm. So we actually uh, became a quarantine hotel. Uh, there were people who didn't have places to stay. And at the time it was two weeks of isolation. Yeah. And people couldn't afford a hotel room for two weeks at a time or, you know, if a husband and wife got sick and they had their baby it was just such a crazy time so we actually shut down one of our uh, wings we were the first hotel to shut down on the island actually we just didn't feel it was an appropriate time to be welcoming people to Mm -hmm. our island at the time and then we opened it up to our community so people could stay here for free and we provided like three meals a day we partnered with different places and (laughs) were able to do that and we and then we renovated the hotel while the hotel was closed Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of these renovations here, like in the lobby during COVID. And then um, it was in COVID where we decided we were going to sell the hotel. And so my mom's brother, who had been running the hotel for, you know, his whole life said, hey, find me um, someone that will respect Hilo Mm -hmm. and take care of Hilo. And I'm I'm ready to let go of the hotel. And it was a really bittersweet thing because, you know, it had been in our family for 60 years Mm -hmm. and, you know, just... Just being a Hilo girl and this being our Hilo Seaside Hotel. Mm-hmm. So we seeked out and we actually landed on SCP, which is Seoul Community Planet. And the um, owner of Seoul Community Planet just is a wonderful guy. His name is Ken Cruz. We love you, Ken Cruz, if you're watching this. <laughs> that, guy is, that guy is really a solid person. And um, our first time we ever talked it was on a facetime call and i my internet was really glitchy and everything was horrible and my wind was in my face and i was like this is the best hotel ever (laughs) he's like your wi-fi is cutting on i'm like it's awesome we're hilo it's the best look at this koi fish And he's like, he's like, okay, that girl is wild. <laughs> I'm like, hey, do you like my interview? So, do you guys want to you guys, you guys so buy you the buy hotel? It? So you want to buy the hotel, right? And he was like, actually, we loved it. I was like, great. So, I don't really know it worked, this it now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. So, then we found Soul Community Planet, and they asked. Okay, so you know, will you stay if we buy the hotel? Will you stay? And my one condition was if I could keep all of my employees. So they said, Aww, mm-hmm. I was like, I'll stay, but you have to keep all 40 employees. And uh-huh. they were like, Okay, can we sit down and meet them? And I'm like, Of course, you can sit down and meet them. So we sat down and one by one, we interviewed them, re interviewed them all. And 40 out of 40, they kept every single employee. Oh, oh my that's gosh. amazing. And our, that's like going to make me cry I know. for everybody and yeah. for yeah. this community. It was really, it was really beautiful. Because it almost is like you get a little upgrade, but it's still like the same faces mm-hmm. and the same people. I know it was really sweet because, you know, we were really proud to show everyone in Hilo like 
our renovations. Yeah. And like, so a lot of people actually, and it was some of SCP, but a lot of it came from the Hilo Seaside renovation. We just mm-hmm. weren't able to open as Hilo Seaside anymore. Mm-hmm. So then when SCP came over, they were just so awesome. Even then I said, oh, well, we started all these renovations and everything that we've done has been done by a native Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. We don't, I don't want to change that. And Ken Cruz solid ken cruz said <laughs> shout, out <to> ken cruz. <laughs> shout out to ken cruz said hire all the native hawaiians you want only native hawaiians if that's what you want to do and you guys have been doing that then i don't want to take up take away from that so he he did he let us um every every piece of furniture like these lights they're ba- they're made from bamboo you know and mm-hmm. our uh, manoa shout out to manoa manoa made those by hand wow and we have our our murals around by brandy sarikaku mm-hmm. even in our commons room we have the carpet, the upholstery, the print, the prints on the wall, the paint. Everything is done by a Native Hawaiian. Wow. So we were super stoked that he allowed us to use the renovation money to go back into com- to the community. And, and people from here, too, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people from oh, here. Oh, yeah. All yeah. Big Island. Mm-hmm. That's huge. So this, this place now kind of, like, represents a lot for this community. Yeah, and we were just so, like, there's thriving talent right here. So even mm-hmm. our, our designers that we use, they let us use the same designers, you know. So it was really sweet. It wasn't like they came in and just threw away all of our history and our ideas and took it away they were like no it's okay you keep it it's doing good it's doing a good job hey that's the kind of investors we're looking for in on this yep. island <laughs> no it's awesome and so they're really a great company every time that um so every time someone checks in with us and stays with us uh we provide electricity for a family in need we uh, provide mental health resources for a critically uh, mentally ill ch- child we plant a tree in a deforested area. Wow. And then an average tourist brings between one to two pounds of trash every time they come to Hawaii. So we partnered with um, Hawaii Wildlife Fund and we remove 2.2 pounds every stay. Wow. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So like That's every so single crazy. stay, all, it, all so these things happen. So every single time someone checks in with us, all four of those things happen. <gasps> wow. So Whoa. the tourist is paying to create a better community and regenerate our community, you know? Ultimately, we're like, it's called Every Stay Does Good. Every Stay Does Good. It's a program. So we're trying to hit um, a part of like soul, a part of community, a part of planet, Mm -hmm. you know. And so I think we've removed like 120,000 pounds of trash so far. That's That's amazing. From Hawaii's beaches. With Hawaii Wildlife Fund. And they know what they're doing. They're so awesome, you know. They're they're doing it appropriately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be able to even removing trash in in a respectful way. So just trying to take the higher route road and do the right thing. That's cool that the funds are like allocated that way. So pretty much $1 per program every time someone checks in. Wow. So it's really cool. You can use it. All hotels should be doing it. It's yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Is that consistent with all like all, S, uh, all SCP, SCP hotels? hotels. Mm-hmm. So every all of them in, within their own community, whatever mm-hmm. they can they can do, they're different. Every state has good program. Damn, mm-hmm. shout out wow. to Ken Cruz. Yeah, Ken. <laughs> what a guy. Yes, Ken. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's awesome because he's what real investment means. Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Like he's going in and making some place better, not just trying to go in some place and take over and then make it worse. He's like, I love that. Investing. Yeah, he really worked with you guys on... Yeah. Who cares? You can yeah. be an invest investor for your own personal gain or you can be an investor into the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we're like plastic free. We don't have any plastic. We're zero waste here. And we're like the only hotel in Hawaii. We uh, are Earth Check certified. So we have all these benchmark statuses for like how we how we take care of our. Um, oh, people love to rah rah here. <laughs> Hello. Hilo. <laughs> we recorded at, um, in downtown Hilo with oh, Kuhao the last time. Uh, and sirens. Yeah, like bars, some ans- yeah. random ads. You jingling, like on the sidewalk. Like, oh, yeah. It's the sounds of Hilo. The sound of Hilo. <laughs> yep, and then in a little, you get the cokies. <laughs> it's all good stuff. No, yeah, he's, he's, he's really awesome because when he came into Hilo, he's like, oh, I'm not trying to take away anything that's Hilo about this mm-hmm. you know whatever you guys want to keep doing and I thought I think that our employees felt super like supported that's one awesome. of our employees Uncle David he's been here 60 years whoa that's like the whole hotel right like pretty much wow. 1964 he's been here yeah 60 years and he's still here with us today and he he's our head landscaper so he's planted every tree every flower everything i love that so when oh, <laughs> that's so special yeah when scp bought the hotel i said hey uncle like you know i understand if you don't want to work anymore you know you could retire he's like 
if you stay, I stay. I was like, oh, I was going to say, if I stay, you stay. We stay. We stay. <laughs> staying. We're staying. Yeah. <laughs> we stay. <in> we stay. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so we shook hands on it. <laughs> we shook hands. So I'll be here as long as he's here. Aww. And he'll be here as long as I'm here. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uncle David, shout out. Yep. Aw, so awesome. Yep. Kalapana, Kalapana boy, Kyoka roots. Like, yeah. And I think that's really awesome too. All of our employees like that are community members, they saw this hotel go through so much transition. Mm-hmm. And a part of it has been heartbreaking, like, you know, losing a piece of that family history. But then I always tell them that our hearts are the same. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter, like, who comes in, you know, comes in and out. Like, we're all the same and our team... They spend more time here with each other than they do at home. Mm. They're like brothers and sisters. Yeah. Our and uncles and aunties. And yes. Yeah. Our oldest housekeeper, she, um, she's she been here also close to 40 years. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so. awesome. This really is like a little family out here. They're home. Yeah. yeah. Home away home. from home. No, it really is. I'm like, yeah. there this morning, they're saying, oh, that shirt wrinkle. <laughs> the shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take it off right now. That shirt wrinkle. We we need to. You go on TV. We need to help you. I said, okay, help me, help me. <laughs> They're really like That's family. Awesome. That's yeah. Amazing. Do you own, do you have brush today? No. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> they go like this with your finger. Yeah. Said, okay. I learn. I learn a lot from them yeah, yeah, yeah. every day. Oh, so mm-hmm. sweet. And, and this was my first job too. When I was really? 14, when I got my worker's permit here. Wow. So I wanted to go and Full work. Circle. At, oh, gosh. I wanted to work at the um, front desk. And uh, my grandpa said, nope, you're, you know, come to work 6 a.m. 6 a.m.? <laughs> I was like, what? Are you serious? He's like, yep, 6 a.m. At, at 14 years old. That's worker's like, permit. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, the, like dang, I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> I, was, I was excited. I thought I was coming to front desk. So I got all dressed in my Aloha outfit. And I go to the front and they're like, oh, you're with Elaine in housekeeping. I was like, oh, I thought I was going to go to front desk. They're like, no. So then I went, to, I went with Elaine and Mama Elaine. She still works here, too. Yep. As she, I worked Monday through Saturday, six to two. It was really like before child labor. school kind. Summer. Oh, summer. My summer. Mm-hmm. Wow. My, and then and then I said, okay, um, can I work in front desk now? I, I did <laughs> I did my job, and he said, no, not until you can make a bed better than Elaine. I was like, <gasps> really? But she's been doing it for so many exactly. more years than me. <laughs> and so I didn't do a good. I guess I didn't do it better than her because the next year I came back and I was a housekeeper again. <laughs> And I said, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and I said, I'm ready. I came to work in my Aloha. <laughs> no, no, no. You go back with Mama Lane. So I worked with Elaine for years. Yeah, yeah. Years and years. You really put in the work and look I at did. where you're at now. I look put in the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put in the work. And, and they'll tell you, I, if we're old, we're busy, I'm like, I'm in there, you know. But yeah. And then, Can you do it better than Mama Elaine? But they like, you know what? I don't, Never. I don't think so. I don't Nobody think so. can do it better than Mama Lane. No one can do better than Mama Lane. Yeah. <laughs> She's so cute, that lady. No, and then um, no, then I said, actually, it's really funny. My mom said, okay, well, we're moving to Waimea, so you need to get another job because you're not going to work you know, at the hotel anymore. I was like, okay. So we get, she has her friend from um, Merriman's said, okay, he'll give you a job. So I was excited. I thought I was going to be a waiter. So I get, I come and I'm in my white sh- outfit, you know, at Merriman's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I show up and they're like, yeah, you're in the dish pit. And I'm like, I was like, what? And I was like, no way. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you can't just be a waitress. You don't even know anything here. And I'm like, I can learn. They're like, no, 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 girl, get in the dish pit. So I go into the dishwashing and I am do this for a whole year. And then I said, okay, they opened the busser position. So I told my brother, look, you got to apply to the dishwasher. I'm going to apply for the buster. <laughs> you know, you take one for the team, Bronson. He's like, all right, man, I'll, I'll help you out. I was like, okay. So he gets the dishwasher position, and then I got the buster position. So then my youngest brother, Brock, he's really a smart guy. I said, hey, you know, the waitress position finally opened up. So I said, it's my turn. It's my chance. <laughs> this is my moment, you know. <laughs> so I applied. I was so excited. And then Bronson, my other brother, he applied for the buster. So he got that. And then the dishwasher position was open. So I told Brock, my youngest brother, okay, your turn to go in the interview. So we all went to our interview. I got the waitress. Bronson <laughs> got the buster. And Brock came out and we said, so did you get it? Like, are you going to be the dishwasher? And he's like, the dishwasher? I applied for the host. <laughs> <laughs> and he got it. And he got Nuh-uh. it. <laughs> He just like he just skipped past skipped all of that all those steps. Yeah. with his Sig Zane. <laughs> oh, no wonder, no wonder. <laughs> I'm looking at him, and me and my brother are like 
dripping sweat after our shifts. We're like dying. We just worked. Rock's over there, just crisp with his Sig Zane shirt. I'm like, Chilling. one speck yeah, of food yeah, on yeah. it. I'm like, are you going to give me the good tables at least? Can I get the windows? He's like, sorry, we rotate. <laughs> He's like, we rotate here. I'm like, wow. So after years of housekeeping and years of dishwashing experience. <laughs> Only to have your brother be your boss. <laughs> to have my brother be my boss. So I've always... I've always just been, yeah. But like, I feel like just understanding hard work and translating I was to like say, like those are some lessons of like work ethic and just like also appreciation of those. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah for sure. <laughs> and that's why now it's like I have people ask me, "Oh, you're running for mayor? Like, are you ready to work that hard?" I'm like, "Oh, that's all I know. <laughs> yeah, all I know is hard work. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about that. You know." Yeah. You, I can watch, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. So what that what are some so things true. you you are excited about, like to, for this campaign? Oh, for this campaign, I think I'm excited to just see um, and understand people's needs more. Like really understanding, like what are, what are the issues in your communities and what what do you face? For myself, I'm really passionate about home ownership in Hawaii for locals mm-hmm. and for Native Hawaiians. I feel like there needs to be more access to land and home ownership. So I'm excited to share my ideas about how to how to move forward with that. Um, some platforms in healthcare and education and whatnot. But really excited to see how this trajectory plays out because mm-hmm. if we could really get Hawaiians some homes, that would be that really would be cool. Really great. In Hawaii, yeah, that yeah. Would be some, makes sense, right? That would be really awesome if we could have Hawaiians in Hawaii. Yeah. That would be really cool too because you're so rooted in this community in Hilo and Waimea, mm-hmm. but then like going and exploring like Kona yeah. and like Honoka'a and Kau mm-hmm. and like the different communities. Yeah, and how you did about your, you know, your uh, legends. Mm-hmm. But, like amazing. Every community has their hometown legends. Yeah. And e- yeah. in those hometowns, there's their hometown heroes and the mm-hmm. things they've done and the key people in the community that makes things happen. That have just so much knowledge and, and they're wisdom. Like, yeah. They're yeah. like gems. Yeah. You know, really? so yeah. being able to talk to them is really awesome. Mm-hmm. And then I'm really excited about just learning more about myself. I feel like more than the journey on becoming or not becoming a mayor, mm-hmm. just knowing yourself is really yeah. important. And that's going to help, I think, just in my life in general Mm -hmm. not too stuck on like the glory of mayor or not mayor yeah but just the possibilities of good leadership do you have any um like idols maybe like in politics or even just like in community that you like really respect and look up to and like kind of count on you count on to like help guide oh yeah so many and everyone has like different things that i learn from from them all my mom is a huge mm-hmm. sor- you know source of my inspiration she's so savvy when it comes to business mm-hmm. and I admire her a lot for her ability to see something and like look 10 20 30 years down the road mm-hmm. so I'm excited to incorporate her and include her in these things I look up to her so much in business in community there's like so many a handful of people that are just most of them are coaches mm-hmm. or leaders um, and mostly people who don't do the things they do for money you yeah. know they just kind of give yeah they're just like those aunties and uncles in the community like who just see a need and fill it yeah and not try to do it for recognition like yeah. oh to even for some people some people go on in years and years and you never even know they did it yeah yeah, yeah. The yeah. Heroes. they're not in it for the glory just like their reasons are so much deeper than that yeah like uncle manny vincent you mm-hmm. know he's he gives himself to the to the canoe club and, but he teaches the kids way more than just paddling a canoe. It's about respect. It's about discipline. It's all these the things. Life lessons. Life lessons. Like heroes mm-hmm. like that. I look up to so much because yeah. even at their age, even as kupuna, they could easily just say, I'm power ready. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they give all they got. They teach and oh they share. Oh my gosh, yeah. He's and 90 years old and amazing. he's still down there. And then it was so cool it's like in the process of making hometown legends and including uncle manny it, like the amount of people that wrote in or commented or had shared and then their stories of how much uncle manny like changed the direct like the the course of their yeah. life or just like made them a better human being it's just mm-hmm. like the power that that man has had over so many people so many people yeah. and, and people like that just inspired yeah. me so much you're like yeah you know you're just a kupuna but you're sharing your knowledge until 
you know, until no can, but can. Yeah. Because right. it doesn't ever die. It mm -hmm. just keeps going until the next, until the next. And it just, it's like a beautiful process. Like, yeah. you sharing your knowledge didn't just stop with the person you shared it with. It, it went more. Oh, yeah. You know? So I love that. And mm -hmm. then, of course, we have, like, our Keokaha people. They're just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm inspired by them a lot of the times because all of us have struggles and things that we go through. But, like, just aloha overflows that negativity. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, like you can tell they're struggling, but they still come in and they're just so positive. And it reminds me like, hey, none of this is too serious. Yeah. You know, yeah. like life is meant to be enjoyed and we learn and whatnot, but not taking this mayoral race to, I mean, of course it's serious, mm -hmm. but to really like learn enjoy. and yeah. enjoy, Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and if you don't learn anything, then it's not, it's not worth it. Yeah. yeah. What's the point? What's the point? Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That's awesome. We're excited for and, you. And in the process, you're inspiring so many people. Yeah. Like, not just like the next generation, but like even people like of our generation and older. Like, look at this girl. Like, look at all the things that she's already accomplished and look what she's like setting out to do. Like, that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. So, Aww. and just continue to share your story. Yeah. Help others through your organization. Like, that's amazing. Thank mm -hmm. you guys. You guys yeah. are awesome because you folks share the stories. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. our. These are my favorite interviews, honestly. That it's coming from your heart, mm -hmm. and like, yeah, I think I love that about Hawaii in general. Yeah. Like when one person wins, like American Idol. Yeah. You know? Yes. Like yeah. we all win, mm -hmm. you know. And the guy who's on the Voice right now, mm -hmm. we're all just so proud of each other. Mm -hmm. Like when one person does well, it's like, hey, right on, you know. Yeah. And it's Lexi or whoever it is. Like I'm yeah. so excited. Like look at this Hilo girl. Look at she's killing it, and uh -huh. I'm proud that I know her, that she's from here, that we yeah. have connections, you know. And so, and I feel like as that transcends, that's really important to lift each other up and support each other and share each other's stories. Yeah. Because that's, you know, what blesses one, blesses all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I that, love go, that. that means so much too, because there's a lot of things or people or even your own self that's like talking doubt or like negativity mm -hmm. like we got enough of that mm -hmm. but then it doesn't cost anything to mm -hmm. like cheer somebody on or just like send a message or like share a story and uh, like hey this girl is like i love her like love what she's up to and like go support her or mm -hmm. go read this article about her mm -hmm. and you know it just doesn't cost anything no and even with for for myself i once read this thing that said like what is the cost of not following your heart? It's it's the regret that you live with every day if you don't. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so something, even though it sounds so corny, it was like a calling. Mm -hmm. Like, you mm -hmm. have to do it. Like, you have to try. You have to at least share your ideas. And if you don't, what's, what's the worst that can happen? Mm. You know, you didn't do it. It's all good. Yeah. So, so far, I don't have any regrets for any of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot, a lot along the way. We have some issues on our community. And this and is just the beginning. <laughs> we need this help. Is, yeah. This right? is just the beginning. This is oh. just the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're excited to just follow your journey. Thank you. you on. Oh, where's the easiest way that people can find you or oh, yeah. learn about you? You can um, briefformare.com if you're interested in learning a little bit about me. And um, at Briani for Mayor on my Instagram <laughs> that we just launched, nice. <laughs> which we're <I> sharing because <laughs> she, she's not really an Instagram girl. And so yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh, look at you all over Instagram now. <laughs> no, it's really interesting. You know, what's really funny is that I started testifying at a county council meeting because they wanted to build a Kia car lot here uh, oh. in Kilkaha. Uh, instead of these local restaurants right here, there's like six of them. They wanted to take out those local companies and put a Kia car lot. Uh, so I actually started out by going and I was testifying against this Kia yeah, car yeah. lot. Because I'm like, no, we don't need a car lot. We need our local businesses. And mm -hmm. I was getting very fired up about it. You know? And you're already blowing up on social media. <laughs> so then I went and then people videoed me, but I didn't know. Yeah, and then yeah. they were saying Brie for mayor. And I still didn't know. And then I didn't log on to my Instagram. So I hadn't known that this was going around Brie for mayor. So people were messaging me, Brie's going to run for mayor. And I was joking like, yeah, 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 one day. But then it became a thing. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then people yeah, were yeah. making their own flyers, a brief for mayor flyer. <laughs> and then people were putting their own backgrounds like, oh, here, shout out to Duchess. That was creative. <laughs> and then I was just like, wow, people are really, honestly, marketing. <laughs> They're doing great. Yeah. Marketing and advertising. They have to, These people should learn a thing from Duchess because she is taking Canva to a whole nother level. I was like, is that Ohia backdrops? I'm stoked. So they were doing all these posts and then at slowly I went on and then I would reshare. And then anyway, after a week went by, there was 200 posts Till this day, I still haven't made a post about like <laughs> like a flyer. All tag posts, yeah. like, literally before this, like Breeze 
profile picture was the no profile picture. It was just like the outline. I didn't. I didn't. And then, yeah, Loeka Longo kid reached out and was like, sis, you're running for mayor. You need to put a profile pic. He's like, it's real unprofessional. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Part of the job. Part of the job. <laughs> That's when your real friends come in. They're like, look, <laughs> you don't have a profile picture. This is looking really weird. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I appreciate that. And my other friend messaged me and was like, does this mean you're going to brush your hair now? <laughs> <laughs> She's the fingers. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, guys. The honesty is beautiful. <laughs> However, <laughs> hold up. So <laughs> it was really funny. Oh, but, I love yeah, that. So it started off as a rumor. And then That's... I still didn't put my name on the ballot. And I kept going and going. And then finally I said, you know what? Why not? <laughs> and people were like, why? And I'm like, why not? Yes. I love that. <laughs> why not? And then, and then even with just running for only county council or whatnot, I kind of just said, well, you know, I've lived in so many different places, yeah, seen yeah. so many faces. <laughs> 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 I just think it, I should it just, just run sense. for mayor. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't feel like I'm only District 3 or only District uh -huh. this, yeah, you know. Yeah. Might as well go to the top. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> spread it, spread <laughs> yeah, it out. Yeah. And like, it, I mean, it's just the beginning, you know. It's like, like, like you mentioned, win or learn. Win or learn. Win or learn. Yeah, so. But I mean, it started off as a joke, but like where they're coming from is not a joke. Because no. then they all like, they yes. See it. Free for it. mayor. Yeah. Well, and like, then they they didn't build the Kia car lot. Shout out to County Council. <laughs> Good choice. Because, you know, we don't need a car Brie lot. Because wasn't going to let yeah, that Brie happen. was not going to let that happen. I was like singing with Auntie Millie. I'm like, Auntie, I love you. We do not want a car lot here. I agree. And so... But yeah, it was kind of funny. I see these videos of myself after and I'm like, probably like this podcast when you hear yourself talk or see yeah, yourself, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, oh no, why am I doing this? I have like no poise, you know? No, yeah, you're great, you're it. great. No, you totally, you do have poise. Oh. More than you know. You guys are so awesome. Thank you for having me. No, thank, thank you for you. joining. Thank you so much. Brieformare.com. Brieformare.com. Yeah. Or on Instagram. Mayor on Instagram. She, might not she has be a the profile one. pic now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you, you'll see that. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, sister, for thank being you on so here. Much. Thank you for following along. Thank you for subscribing, sharing. Um, yeah, please subscribe if you don't already subscribe. We really appreciate it. And thank you for letting us record at this beautiful hotel. Yeah. You're so welcome. SAP. Stay for the week. Oh, I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Brielle. Hello, guys. Aloha. Aloha.